I'm glad you got that opportunity. And if all goes well, you'll have that opportunity more than once. That's right. When these twins go. I didn't say twins. Now, I didn't say that. Hey, guys. We are back. It's Rose and Mr. Pharaoh himself, Mr. D, the big D, the big Donaldson. And today we are going to talk about our experiences as like parents, new parents. And we have had some like, I feel surprises. And then there are some things that we kind of already knew what to expect. So we're going to share that with you guys today um, in the event that you guys are new parents or you're maybe among some new parents. Um, and we have like a list of questions that we're going to go through. But I think I want to like ask some freehand questions um, before we really get into the list. I'm going to go ahead and ask this first. So, okay. What was like the most surprising thing to you when becoming a new parent? That they let us leave the hospital with the baby. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. You know, um, I guess in the hospital, the fact that I didn't know that they will let you, <clears throat> they pretty much put you in a room with the baby, like in your room, and then the baby's in there with you. Like I, you know, in movies and all that good stuff, all the babies are in the little room with all the other babies, and oh, that's my baby. But no, nah, the baby's in the room with you, and you need to tighten up being a parent right then and there. I kind of think it's kind of a situation. Also, they want to see you. I mean, can you be a parent? You know? Because it's kind of hands on right then and there. She come out, yeah. bam, you dust off, go back to your room. Here you go. Right. Be a parent. That was interesting because I forgot, like, back in the old school days, I forgot that they put all the babies in one room. And you're in a room kind of left to recover or whatever. And... But you know, I think that that might not be such a bad thing because I have such paranoia about going to the hospital, like having a baby and then making sure you come out with the right baby. I know it's like really awful to say, but I have always like, I don't know, felt some sort of paranoia about that because I'm like, I don't want to come out with somebody else's baby and it was like a baby mix up and all that other stuff. I think um, for me, were you done? I think for me, the most surprising thing was the difference in um, like the sonogram versus when I actually saw my baby for the first time. She looked so different. And the funny thing was in every sonogram that we got, which was like a 3D, we got like the original sonogram and then we got like one that was like more, I think three or 4D or something like that. And she's beautiful. But I kept, I was very bothered with the fact that she kept changing her appearance. Like, in terms of like, well, the sonogram kept showing a different appearance. So I was like, I don't know how this baby is going to look when she comes out. Because she looks drastically different every single week now. So I'm like, okay. And one of the most recent ones, she looked a lot like me. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay. And then I saw, <laughs> and then I saw another one. And then she looked like somebody else's baby like hmm. like I didn't even know who she was I was like this is this is a little unreal so when I saw her for the very first time I was like okay now she doesn't look like she only looks like one of the sonogram pictures that I've ever received and now she doesn't I feel like she doesn't look like any one of us so I was like what the crap <laughs> is she gonna like grow into looking like one of us or both of us or something like that because it just it it threw me off a little bit. I guess I thought with like how far we've come with technology, like it would just get it on the head. Like this is how she's gonna look. Even when she was like smiling, I was like, oh, she's got such a beautiful smile. And she does, but that sonogram was just like really off-putting. And not so much because like, you know, how all the fluids and stuff like that might affect the way that the baby may look on the sonogram, on the ultrasound. It was just like, no, she had a completely different appearance. And I'm actually going to insert some pictures so you guys can see what I'm talking about with the sonogram versus how she actually looked when she came out. And it was a difference of like... Greasy and all, how she actually looked. Yeah. Greasy. Greasy. Got pictures, player. And it was like, 
a matter of two or three weeks too. So it wasn't like a drastic amount of time that she was able to change her appearance. It was just like sonogram, all of a sudden, two, three weeks later, here she is, totally different looking person. So I question whether or not we got the right baby. <laughs> I know we got the right one. I saw it when it came out. Well, not when it came out, but yeah. close enough. And uh, now that I see the shape of her head, I definitely don't question that she's mine. And don't be funny. Don't be funny. <laughs> It seemed pretty quick. Yeah, it was it was quick. I think she was out in like not nice. even fifteen minutes. You're gonna feel pressure. You're gonna feel pressure, and then we heard a little baby, and then it was funny because <laughs> top there had a little baby over the little <laughs> screen like here's your baby, and she's like fresh out. Breezy, he was hella excited white. to show us too. He was just like here she is. And, you know, we clean her off and all that stuff. I'm like yo, it's a real life baby. <laughs> So that was, that was, that was cool. I just never knew the experience of like having gone through it. Like even with my girlfriends telling me like, oh, this is what you're going to go through, da, da, da. You still never really know what to expect, right? And so my surgery was actually scheduled for like 1030. But we didn't wind up getting in till I think 1130 or something like that. Because the same day that I was going in for my surgery, there were three sets of twins that were being born before I was to even go in. Mm -hmm. So they were definitely very busy that day. Um, but we went in and they gave me my shot and it was kind of funny because when I got, I had to get like a shot in my back, which was the numbing, uh, thing, uh, epidural, I guess is what it's called. Maybe. I don't know. I've never had a baby. I, I don't really remember what it's called. Anyway, it's just like the numbing medication they give you. And so the minute they shot me in my back, it was just kind of like, I felt like it was a tranquilizer gun going right through me. And they were like, you're going to feel pressure. Your body's going to feel heavy. It's going to get extremely warm. And then we're pretty much going to get started right away. And that's exactly what happened. Everything that they said was going to happen, happened exactly the way they said it would. I felt all of a sudden, all of my limbs, well, for the most part, from the waist down, um, my legs got extremely heavy to the point that they had to, like, put me on the operating table because I couldn't do anything. Um, they had shifted me on the operating table. Um... I was, of course, naked underneath my uh, my little robe or whatever. Shut up. And so um, they pretty much lifted that gown up and got to work. And it was it was a little unusual because it was the weirdest feeling because it was like I was feeling hot. I was hot and heavy, literally. <laughs> I was feeling hot and heavy. Um, I was starting to get nauseated. I had a headache. My words were slurring. It was just like, it was... It was such an uncomfortable situation for me. It was me. like a long Friday night. It was. It seriously was. It was like... A couple of drinks. Hot and heavy. Probably a few drinks. Nauseated. Yeah. Can't really move. <laughs> slurred words. A good Friday night. A good Friday night. Plus the walk of shame. <laughs> no, no. Oh. Man. But when we heard her crying, that was when we looked at each other and we were like... Can't put it back now. She's here, she's here. We're like, she's the only baby in the room, so we know it's her. That was just so exciting. That was like mm. the best hearing her cry because we were like, for nine months, she's been just baking and baking and baking and I've been receiving all the kicks and all the different stuff. But I was like, when you actually hear your baby, it's like, holy crap. It's like a ball game, new ball game now. Like she's here and just like you said, we could not take her back. Take her back, it's game time. It is what it is, so. <laughs> but I will tell you this though, like on the commercials, they really like glamorize everything. And it is not like on the commercials at all, okay? First of all, I was looking like a hot ass mess, um, to say the least. It's a commercial, they can't have people up there looking crazy. I'm trying to sell something. <laughs> like on, on that man. Pampers commercial, I don't know if y'all seen that Pampers commercial. Where the lady's hair is just perfectly done, perfectly curled, not one bead of sweat on her forehead, her right. cheek, her nose, to nothing. Buy pampers for somebody that looked like they've been out working in the yard. <laughs> I don't want them pampers. It, it was just, it was crazy. Cause it's like, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, they put the baby immediately. I'm like, I didn't get that immediately. Like, first of all, he was over there taking pictures and videotaping and playing with the baby and being crazy with the nurse. First of all, ah. I don't know. You do understand what I'm saying. You would want 
But I don't know if you would want the baby immediately on your chest. No, when I said immediately, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean all I'm bloody. I'm talking yeah. about the commercial. Yeah, the commercial. And they just go under, fuck out a baby. And the baby's all sparkly and shiny. Hey, what the baby <laughs> Sparkly like? and shiny. That baby look, that baby look greasy, bloody, and it is. Looking like an alien. I mean, as your baby, you're going to hold your baby regardless. But yeah, you got to dust that thing off. Come on. Right. Keep it real. Right. And so it, it was eventually like it was I mean, it was just really a matter of minutes because we weren't in the operating room very long at all. I think we're in the operating room less than 30 minutes. Uh, probably so. It's like less than 30 minutes. So it was just like the whole thing was just I mean, they were really trying to get you in and out. And I could appreciate that. Um, but yeah, like when they finally like when I heard her and then they put her back in the bed, I was twisting my neck up trying to see if I could see her. I was just like looking trying to look at the back like where is she where is she i want to see her but then the nurse was blocking my view he was blocking my view so i couldn't even really get a good look at her and i was like but y'all freaking move i was the one that i brought I her over there i didn't push her out but I you brought know her over i got her taken out of me so you can see a mom over there yeah well, she acted up i brought her over there mm, yeah and i was like oh she's so cute and then the funny thing is, <clears throat> I remember them putting her on my chest. I remember that part. And then I remember them putting the cover over her. And I was really surprised because I thought at this time that she would still be crying. But I guess she was like nice and warm and comfy at that time. And then, because she was actually cool before they put her on my chest. So it wasn't so much as like our connection, but it was just like they put her on my chest and then she was straight. And, but then that's like the last thing I remember. Before being wheeled off, I got drugged up, and wheeled off. Yeah, they had to check her weight, they had to check her height, and just get all her measurements and all that stuff. And that was most of that was before you even got in the the room before we went back to your room. Mm -hmm. So I did all that and gave her a little hat. Um, the dreaded hospital hat. The hospital hat, y'all yeah, seen them? Got that little that little tam on. <laughs> but um, yeah. That was it. Cleaned her up a little more, but that was it. I got to cut the cord, of course. Of course. And was that like what you thought it would be? I just didn't want to blow it. So you want me to cut right in the seam, right here. <laughs> and it was gushy and thick. It was kind of weird. So what happened? Like once you cut it, what happened to the extension piece? Do they throw it away, or do they? It's like blood and stuff started shooting out everywhere. And then lady, it. Okay, that's not what happened. Um, <laughs> she cut it, she put a clamp on it, and another piece was whatever. <laughs> I don't know. And um, that's it, it is clamp, but it's not, it's not like grotesque or anything. I'm glad you got that opportunity, and if all goes well, you'll have that opportunity more than once. I'm trying, when these twins go. I didn't say twins, now I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I think for me, when we got to the room, um, what, what room? Your room? Hospital room. Yeah. When we got to the hospital room, I think what really surprised me, and, and let me just say this, I'm not completely naive when it comes to taking care of babies. I've, I've babysat, okay, I, first of all, I can see you in the monitor. I think as it pertains to our baby, I was shocked-ish the, um, that we just weren't really able to get any kind of rest in the hospital. I know in a hospital in general, you really don't get rest. I mean, people are always coming in and out, but it was just like, she just kept like crying. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. Like this is a whole human being. I don't know how to take care of her, blah, blah, blah. I really thought I was gonna be super, super, super freaked out, but I was a little bit calmer than what I thought I was. And I don't know if that's like mommy intuition or whatever the situation was, but I feel like probably now more so, I'm a little more paranoid than I was when I was in the hospital. Is that weird? I'm a little more paranoid now. And the funny thing is I've gotten a chance to know her a little bit more now, but I just still feel like, I just want to be able to make sure she's good, you know? She's good as long as you change and let her drink from the tap. Ain't much now, you know? Now it's just sort of like anything, the basics. Yeah, if anything strange happened or fever or anything like that, the coughing. Yeah, you check that out. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just changing her and feeding her. Right. For the most part. 
And I think speaking of breastfeeding too, I had a concern as to whether or not, why did my thing come on? I, I wasn't calling you. Oh, I said breastfeeding. It's I think breastfeeding. it said Bixby. Probably. When I started uh, breastfeeding, I did not realize that there was like an evolution when it comes to like how the milk comes out. I always knew that there was like the initial colostrum, if I'm saying it right. Um, I knew that there was that, but I didn't realize that that was something that would take a little bit of time. So at first I didn't think I was going to be able to produce any milk. Then I produced it, but it wasn't quick enough for me. I became a little impatient and then I started becoming self-conscious as to whether or not I could actually produce enough for her and her growing appetite. And I still kind of deal with some of that these days, but the supply is a little bit greater. Um, so now I'm able to breastfeed and I'm able to pump. Which is good for me because I can help with the feeding now. Oh. I can help with feeding, not the pumping. I'm not I was milk. about to say, I mean, you don't drink any other milk, so no, why would that be good no. for you? Or do I? <laughs> I can help with the feeding. Yes. So that's good. So she doesn't necessarily have to get up all the time in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. You know, she'll wake up, but she don't have to necessarily get up mm -hmm. to get the little one. I'm not gonna feed her. This camera range, my puppies look huge. It's probably because it's got milk in them, dog. Like I look like don't I'm flatter or something. You got first milk of all, in there. You got food in there. First of all, don't be hating, okay? <laughs> I got some. I got some, listen, as of right now, I got some nice puppies. I can't say what's going to happen in the next few months, though. I don't know. I don't know. It might be done, yeah. I got to pray on it. <laughs> Over here, so what you say? Oh, don't say that. Oh, I hate bags. that. It's like my nips were touching my knees. That is just not a good yeah. situation. It's a tough week. It is a tough week. But I will tell you, though, my nips have been feeling real raw. I mean, you got raw. A, Some days tattered. You got a little honey badger. <laughs> on them exactly well, I going you, to you, town you that girl listen that girl is she'd be like ah I'm like ah you should see the facial expressions I make when she's getting ready to get on oh especially in the beginning it used to be like little honey manager oof I <laughs> think <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing for me what's the funniest thing before I tell you my funny thing what is the funniest thing so it's easy the funniest thing for me, <laughs> maybe because I'm a guy, but her poops and farts are so <laughs> violent. They sound so violent coming from a little way that might like this long. Yeah. They're so violent and they're loud. She'll be in the room. We got the door cracked and her little bass in there and we'll be out here. TV on, you know, not loud. And you'll just be minding your business on the computer while the TV. And you just hear, poof, poof. <laughs> and it's like, whoa! It's like, was that what I thought it was? <laughs> so freaking and it's so loud. loud, and you can kind of tell when they're coming. Sometimes she'll be asleep, and then out of nowhere she'll just <laughs> trying to get that thing situated down, and then she'll pause, and then it's just, <laughs> poof, poof, poof. it is. Yeah. It's so violent, and it's so funny every time. Yeah. And we're like, did you hear that? Like, you heard that? Bro, what baby? What's going on up in there, girl? Yeah, it's no, it's so just too hilarious. That's the funniest well and her lips, the way she does her lips. No. She was sitting there and Yeah. Yeah. And she's very alert. Her eyes open, she's following, she's very, very alert. That's, yeah. that's how she looks, just like that. Yeah, she does that a so lot. That's that's the funniest thing. How about yourself? I was going to say that the farts, the farts the, are the funniest. It's the absolute funniest hilarious. to me. Um, I love when she, <laughs> I love it, but I don't love it. Because <laughs> I'm like, dang, we got our work cut out for us now. That's my baby. Yeah. I work hard. Yeah. That's my baby. So she takes after you when it comes to the farts. The gaseousness. That's all you? That's your boy. Okay, good, because I'm going to say, not me. Nah, not so much. No. I, I'll take that one. I'll hold that one. That's me. <laughs> this is a weird question. What do you think some of your default settings would be from your parents? What are things they did with you? I don't know. I was a baby. <laughs> Discipline? Mm -hmm. Not really hard and harsh. 
but I knew lines not to cross. Right. And make those perimeters and barriers early. And, hey, you go for that. You know, and a child will test about it. Let me see. Let me go over there. Okay, I ain't going over there no more. That part. You know, but it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just boundaries and, you know, not trying to be my child's buddy. But, be a parent. But I want you to always be able to come to. That's the line a little bit there. But mm -hmm. That's it. Just, you know. I want to be an enjoyable parent. I don't want to be a dreadful parent. I'm going to embarrass the kid. I already know that. This we know. She will know that eventually. But, um, I guess, man. Just, uh, you know. Not try not to be too. I don't want to be too overbearing and smother the child as they grow. But, mm -hmm. you know. Be firm but fair, you know. Have a sense of humor. Yeah. I don't think that's a problem for you. <laughs> so that being said, I do have a, an additional question on top of that. So, so far, and I know that we have only been in the game less than a month, but so far, are you the parent that you thought you were going to be prior to having her? Yeah. Yeah? I'm knowing exactly what I thought I would do. Uh, being a goober. Okay. All right, that's what I am. You do the changing, you do the feeding, all that good stuff. Make sure she's okay. But, you know, it's always like it's like a new toy. Mm -hmm. A very valuable and precious new toy. But like a new toy. So it's like, I got a kid. Sometimes I still got to think, I got a kid. Yeah. You know, so. Making that transition is a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a lot more lenient than I thought I was going to be. I thought that I would be a lot more strict. But I mean, then again, she's- She two weeks old. Let me finish what I'm saying. Well, she can't go to the game. She too. Jeez, you did, did I, I know, did, I, did I interrupt you? No, you didn't. Jeez, let me finish where I'm, I'm, I was trying to go somewhere with somebody it. Somebody need to step in right now. Continue. Well, I, I thought I would be more, like when she cries, for example, like sometimes I feel like she overdoes it. And I'm like, okay, drama queen, you know, like calm it down. But I'm not as, I'm a little more passive when it comes to that than I thought I would be. Like, sometimes I do get aggravated. Like, okay, you're doing a lot of crying and you're good. Like, you dry, you're well fed, you know what I'm saying? You wrap, you swaddled up and you're looking great, feeling great. I don't know why you're crying, so cut it out. You know, um, but I'm just not, I'm not seeing that yet. Now, I'm not saying it's not here to, it's not going to come. Maybe it's lying dormant in there. <laughs> Maybe she's gonna do that one little thing that just sets me off, and I'm like, what the crap? Like, I'm I'm really really passive right now, which is like, not really what I expected of myself. What are things you like from how your parents raised you, and you want to repeat? Um, I don't think my parents were very strict, but I wasn't a bad kid. I mean, there was no reason for them to have to put all these shackles and rules on grandma. Because, I I mean, I wasn't a bad kid. I wasn't sneaking out. I wasn't doing this and that. I got my grades. I did all that stuff. I was always involved in extracurricular activities at school and sports and whatnot. So, you know, I just, um, what was the question? I wanted my kid to be able to grow and find their own way. Give her advice. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes everybody's not always excited to ask for advice or ask your opinion on something. But, you know, there's, there's ways to put your opinion and your advice in there without actually being, drilling it in there and being aggressive. With it. So, you know, I just uh, want to be there if you need me, if you need to talk. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I have a lot of experience about life and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I just don't want to be strict. I um, think we're going to raise her, do our best to raise her to the point where she's going to do what she's supposed to do so we don't have to always say, what's she doing, what's she doing, what's she doing, what's she doing, what's she doing? Well, yeah, we're doing, boom, boom, and all that, but, you know, that's, 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 that's pretty much it. What are some things you absolutely do not want to repeat that your parents have done? Um, I, I, my parents weren't perfect, but I, I don't have an issue with how my parents raised me. I mean, I, I you know, there's nothing I can say, oh, I wish they would have done that. But, nah, man, it was a situation where I was, <laughs> I guess I was embarrassed, but. 
Now I look on it, I'm like, whatever, man. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, whatever. Like, no, it's true. not that big deal. You know, but I, I mean, I don't want to, I just say that. My parents didn't embarrass me like that, but, you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be that guy, but I don't want to embarrass my child to the point where she's like, "Oh my God, God!" <laughs> you know, I don't want to be that. Ah, well, you know, I don't know. anybody. Hopefully, but, nobody would know. want to do that to their kid. Well, that is know. not goals. But I have no problem getting out there and you know cutting up a little bit. But just, just yeah. to keep it. Maybe if know. they uh, they deserve it. Then, yeah, I mean, you know, like but they don't embarrass you. Yeah, my thing is, <laughs> you know, what I tell you to a lot of people like if you want to go to a certain level. I guarantee you, I'm going to be about two notches higher than you are. Like, and please believe that. Go. Please, he is nuts. That's believe the way you want to go, and that's where we'll go. But just know. Okay. Oh, you want to act out and embarrass me? Okay, no problem. I got you. You're like Petty McPetterson when it comes to That's, that's <laughs> what it is, man. I'm not gonna, you're not going to outdo. You're that's not. just not going to happen. Not when it comes to random ridiculousness. You're just not going to outdo of, that one. Um, Full of random ridiculousness. He's full of a lot of... Some people will say, hey, I am full of other stuff. Yes. But, you know, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. How about you? I think that what I like about my parents is that I had like an even... How do you say it? I think I had like an even balance when it came to like my parents. Because my mom was a disciplinarian. And my dad was... He wasn't like a pushover or anything like that. But he was just a lot more laid back, low key, the funny kind of guy. And so, um, but he disciplined us too when necessary. Um, I like the fact that we grew up with a lot of structure. I like that um, my parents made sure that we had everything that we needed. Even if we didn't get everything we wanted, that was cool. As long as we had everything we needed, that was what was most important. And I feel like we grew up to be pretty well-rounded, contributing individuals to society. Um, and... I don't know. Like I, I, that's one thing I would want to be able to give to my daughter. But I want to be able to give her more than what I had. Even though I almost feel like if I give her more than what I had, it almost would be like spoiling her because I feel like we had it pretty good. You know what I mean? Like we had a nice upbringing, and it wasn't. I mean, thank God it wasn't crazy, and you know, nothing like that. But um, you know, every parent wants to be able to give their kid like the world. So I want to be able to give that to her. Um, I just don't, I don't want to deal with a spoiled, rotten kid. I don't want to be responsible for making a kid spoiled, you know, rotten. That's not what I want. Um, I, she won't be. Yeah, I, that's, that's, we're not doing that. We're definitely not doing that. Um, I want my kid to be an extension of us, you know. Um, well-rounded, well-versed, you know, child, well-educated, that kind of thing. I think as it pertains to what I don't want to repeat from my parents, I would not want to repeat like, um, um, how do you say, too much. Like, I don't want it to be too much where um, she's on punishment too much or she's grounded. Like, I, that's how we grew up. Like, we grew up, we were always grounded. Like, always grounded. And... Because y'all were terrible. We were not terrible. We were amazing. Okay. We were friggin' angels. And it just always seemed like it was something. Even if it was like, you know, we asked her too many times. We asked my mom too many times about something that she got aggravated. Then she would ground us. And it would suck because when we're grounded, we couldn't even use the phone. And back then, we didn't, we had to pay for call waiting. I don't know if y'all remember that back in the day, hmm. way before cell phones came out. When we were just using the house phone, you had to pay for call waiting, you had to pay for caller ID, to pay for all that stuff. So, so we didn't have it. So if my friends called, my first thing was, yo, I can't be on the phone because if my mom hears a business signal, she's going to be up at my behind, like tonight. So I got to get on the phone ASAP. They're like, oh, well, I was just calling to see what you were doing. Why? We ain't got cars. So it's not <laughs> like you can come see me. I can't come see you. So why are you worried about it? So I was like, um, this was like way back, this is before even high school. So it was like, you know, mm -mm, I can't be on the phone. I got to get off the phone. I'm like, oh, what are you up to? I'm cleaning the house. One time this person, uh, it was this guy that we used to go to school with. We were just friends. He would always call our house. <laughs> and every time we call our house, we were cleaning. Because <laughs> we were always grounded. And he said, you know, every time I call y'all, y'all always cleaning. 
I said, because we always grounded. <laughs> and he was like, damn, y'all got to have like the world's cleanest house. <laughs> I should be able to eat on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, listen, the way we've been getting in trouble, you're going to be able to eat off that damn floor. But I, that's not one thing I want to pass on to my daughter. I would hope and pray that I can be a little bit more, or just on my end, not you, but just in my mind, I want to be a little bit more, um, I, I don't know the word for it, but so lack of better terminology, I guess. I would want to be a little bit more creative as it pertains to making sure she's on the right track as opposed to you're grounded, 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 grounded. Let me see if I can take away your TV. Let me take away your cell phone. Let me take away this. So, like, I don't want to always have to resort to doing that in order to get you on the right track. Little oh, baby. Uh-oh. But, um, I agree with that. But I can come up with some creative punishment. <laughs> Watch that kid. Come up with some creative stuff, man. Very creative. Okay, I'm like listening out because there's this, a faint little cry. Do you believe in yelling, hitting, timeouts, explanations? Oh, I'm a timeout, all right. Okay. Nah, I'm a, I'm gonna pop that bum. Got my bum popped. I'm all right. I wouldn't beat, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I got my bum popped. I believe in that. I believe in that. I don't believe in overdoing it. I don't believe in like. A, you know being abusive or anything like that but i believe that when the time calls for it it'll be me ashamed. i think i'll be really emotional like i'd be like pop you but then i'd be probably crying afterwards because i'd be like no emotion here play i didn't want to hurt you no I emotion just wanted here. To send the message. come here Shut up. don't get <laughs> yeah but i definitely got hit i got hit honey i got hit i got whooped i got spankings i got paddlings so, um, I do believe in passing it forward. And, you know, I got to be honest with you. I can't say that I've ever heard of anybody really going on the wrong track who has had that kind of discipline. You get it. Yeah. You don't want to overdo it, man. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be abusive. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I'm a, I am a then and there type person. I understand. Right. You know, people are like, hey, he's whooping his cat, he's whooping his cat. I get that, and I know how to not go above and beyond, but boy, I'm going to then and there. You act up in this aisle, okay, that's what's up. Yeah. yeah. I'll take you over there by the, the mangoes. <laughs> <coughs> by the mangoes. I ain't got to draw back very far to get that bum. Right. Boom, you, right. Oh, don't think because teeth. we're in front you of people. Sit down somewhere. I don't know how parents want very little triplets because they can, I can hear I can, do, 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 do. They can talk through the mouth. You can sit down somewhere. Do that. My mouth ain't moving. You can sit down over the floor. Ventriloquist. Go get in the car. Oh. And do all that. Yeah. Go we'll get my baby. Ah. He's the culprit of the crying. Here she is. It's a baby. Look at that forehead, just like her mom. Hold up. I like to carry her like a <laughs> salt wire. Kind of right there. <laughs> it's a baby. E, 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 e. What a cartoon. I believe in what? Yelling, hitting, timeouts, and explanations. I kind of feel like I'm I'm with all that, but it just depends on the you know the situation. Um, I'm not against yelling. I'm kind of loud anyway. Hitting. I don't want to have to resort to that. It that's sort of like a last uh, resort. Timeouts. Meh. Kind of. Sort of. But I don't really care about timeouts too much. If I have to ground you. It may happen. So just make sure you're good, okay? Um, I do believe in explanations. That, now, there is kind of like a two-parter to that. I don't believe in, like, when a kid says, for example, well, like, well, why am I in trouble or whatever? I don't necessarily believe in just being, like, oh, because I said so. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, I don't, as my child, you know, I don't believe in answering to you, obviously. You know, I'm the adult. I'm the parent. If I say you're punished, you're punished. I don't want you to keep questioning me about it because that's going to piss me off. However, I do believe in being clear as to why I put you on punishment. So that way you know. It's not like, oh, you know, what was me? I don't know what's going on. And I don't feel like any child should get in trouble and then not know why they're in trouble. I feel like that's like, that's grounds for like such, you know, mental dysfunction. And, you know, you shouldn't, for me, I feel like you really should not do that to a kid. I feel like... I will let you know there it will be clear 
why you're in trouble. But I will not, every time you get in trouble, feel the need to have to explain myself to you as to why I put you on punishment. You know what I'm saying? Like, we won't have that. So I will make it very clear. Hey, this is why you're in trouble. Just so there are no questions. Da, da, da. Don't be questioning me about that. Because it is what it is. I can understand that. I'm just, I mean, I'll tell you why you're in trouble. You, you really don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to debate with you. It's not going to be a loan draw. Well, this is what happened. Point A. Uh, Would you like to be grounded? Yeah. Is that all right? Is, is two weeks too long? Or we can make it down to a week if you'd like. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> We're not doing that. And you got to pull it out of me to yell at you. Like, yell, yell. You're not like a yeller, yeah. though. You're like, yeah. you're more of a more say it one time, right. I'm good type. Pretty much. Yeah, had his face. <laughs> What are your big lines of parenting? What is absolutely okay slash not okay for for your child to do? Hitting, biting, not eating, leaving the table, throwing food. Mm. What's well, okay? <laughs> do what I tell you do. Um, we're not throwing food. We're not. I mean, that's grounds to get your butt toe up. That's what that is. And we ain't doing no food fights in the house. Ain't no throwing food we, unless yeah. that's what we doing. I say, hey, we ready to throw. Well, ain't it, it's going to be something bad that we don't eat because I ain't throwing away something I eat. Mm -hmm. But um, nah, don't talk back to me. You know, I can. you can talk to me. But don't talk back to me. Don't, don't, don't disrespect me. I don't me. tell you to go to your room. Why well, I got a boy? You sure you want to go there? I'm not you even sure gonna, you want to go to that door? I'm not even going to yell back. I'll just go over there and I think silence is, is a lot worse than even yelling a lot of times. I think silence it is. Even if you want to you wanna yell, I'm not going to yell. Mm -hmm. right, just tear that butt up. Be done with it. That part. I'm not going to negotiate with you on something you wrong. I'm not going, you know, I'm not bargaining with you. I'm not, I'm not doing all that. I'm your parent. Mm -hmm. I'm not a used car salesman. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm not your agent trying to negotiate a deal for you. Like, man, you cross the line, you cross the line. You got discipline then and there because you let, it's like with students. If you let them get away with this much on this, well, I'll let you slide this time. Then they're going to think they can slide next time. Nah, player. I'm going to discipline you and the next one, you, and you thought we were cool, you and you and the whole line because everyone, no one's better than anyone else. Yeah. You are my child. I want you to make sure you stay in line and do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, but up, I tell you though right now. You want me to whoop you right now? I don't think so, baby. So what if she becomes like a teenager, right? And she starts hitting you. What? What was she like, hitting? I, I'm just throwing it out there. Let's just say she, you want you, she wants to go to the mall, mm -hmm. and her grades aren't very good. And you said, no, you're not going to the mall because you know you're already grounded because your grades aren't good. And she gets to getting in. Let's say she doesn't even hit you, but let's say she throws something. She throws <laughs> something at you. I'm going to throw some at her. He's hitting all this time. <laughs> I'm not going to throw the hands. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scare my kid because I'm going to laugh at a lot of stuff. And not laugh like, oh, that's funny, baby. I'm going to laugh because it's going to stop me from saying something that I probably, I don't want to say. I want to say, but probably wasn't the best thing to say. But if she, th <laughs> ah, this baby throws something at me. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. I mean, like I said, I'm not going to beat her. I'm not going to do anything like that. But she going to regret throwing something at me. She going to be like, yeah, that, that's that line I couldn't cross. All right. That's so, the point that she realized yeah, she effed Yeah, she effed yeah. There's certain things. Talking back, there's certain things that's that's automatic. That's automatic red button. Yeah. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Yeah, because we were raised not to talk back. And whenever my mom gave you this look, you already knew what time it was. Uh -huh. Even if you asked her a question and she didn't like the question and she did this, <laughs> you already know. Okay, cool. cool. We're going back off. We're going back off. This isn't a good time. I've been so. working on my Samuel Jackson look. <laughs> So listen, if he gives you that, this look, if he gives you this look, give the look, and I give you this look, at the same time, you know you don't have to, you don't have to. To the point of no return. I think the worst thing is making both parents no pissed off at the same time. To the point of no That's the worst part. One of the things I said I definitely did not want to repeat 
um, is I don't want to repeat like I don't want to repeat like embarrassing my child in public unless my child did something that warranted that embarrassment. At that point, it's kind of like okay, gloves are off. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not gonna be going to the grocery store and showing out and thinking that I'm it's not okay, gonna, baby. you know. Um, it's okay, baby. You know, it's basically make sure that you're good and it's taking okay. care of that behind while we're there. Like that is a thing. But I will not. Um, I it's will. Okay, baby. I don't feel like just because mm. you're my child that gives me a right it's to okay, disrespect baby. you or gives me a right to like you know, look down on you or something like that. Because I feel like, I mean, you're a human being just like I am and you have feelings just like I do. And I that's one thing that's been my pet peeve since I was little is that I can't stand that people who are older it's think okay, that they're baby. like better than, you know, you it's because okay, they are baby. older or they it's feel like they just, I mean, they do deserve respect, but that you it's don't okay, deserve baby. respect because you're younger. So I would definitely baby. say that I would talk to my child in a sense of being a human being, but we're not... You know, gonna be like BFF, like we're not gonna be drinking together or nothing crazy like that. That's just not gonna be a thing. I do believe in being a discipline, disciplinarian, but I also believe in if you have a problem, come and talk to me about it. Like I have an open door policy, and you know, because I feel like I didn't really get that when I came up because my parents are old school. And it's just kind of like they're like, no, we're just parents. You know what I'm saying? We're not gonna be, we're not with this new age parenting type of stuff. But I believe like mental health is just as important. So if it's somebody that you want to talk to, I would rather you come to me, you know what I mean, than me have to find out about some stuff from somebody else. That's just where I stand with this. So here is the last question. So now that you talked about the big lines and your values as parents, what are some strategies of how you can help each other when the other one is losing their cool? I think out of the two of us, I am the more calmer when it comes to things like that. Am I off base with that? I mean, you're right. Okay. So, that face. So, you know, I'm more of the, all right, like we know she did this or that, but don't come in so hot that she just, all right. He's, she's going to be disciplined, she don't, but don't come in hot. That's the thing. I'm coming out. If she's going to yawn, then I have to give up with her. But definitely don't do the play one against the other thing. I have no problem saying, you come, Daddy, can I go? What's your mama say? I didn't ask her. Like, oh, well, ask your mama. Yeah, and I appreciate that too because that's how kids can easily pin one parent against the other. And it's kind of like, then it creates a problem with us because it's like, well, you said she could borrow the car and I didn't say, I said, no, she can't borrow the car. And so now we over here looking crazy and more than likely I have to be the one to say, well, if you said she could borrow it, then I would look like a douche if I said, no, she can't. She has for each other. You can tell when your partner's a little agitated or that's always me you know, or something so i'm always irritated i'm always confused bewildered and i'm like yeah wtf what i do what happened why is she crying what's wrong with her and what's mm -hmm. wrong with me <laughs> i'm oh always questioning <laughs> those were all the questions that i had so i think we pretty much went through the entire list and then some unless you have something else you'd like to say I'll just say this. This has been, I've always, I've wanted a child for a long time. But I wanted to be married before I had a child, which that's what happens. Somebody tried to make me wait even after we got married. Oh my gosh. But it wasn't my time. It was the big man's time. And we have a little one here. And one yeah. of however how many is to come? Oh yeah. One of them, you know, I have, you know we're going to have a nice little <laughs> family pack. But, I was going to say football team. No, I was going to say, but, um, um, sir. But uh, this is something that I wanted to do. I wanted to do, not like it's, I'm going skydiving, but this is something that I wanted to happen for a long time. And I know this is a very special and blessed experience, and I'm just going to maximize and have as much fun as I can doing it and be the best parent that we can possibly be, help and support one another, because it's all about this little one right here. That's very true. That's what it is. That's what I say. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, jelly beans. As long as I'm not black jelly beans, nobody likes those. The black jelly beans are pretty gross. And, and you talk about cereal because if you like black jelly beans, you I gotta question you. Yeah. So, I'll say one last thing. Okay. Let me if you me. have pets like a dog, I don't know about cats, but we have a dog, a little dog with Jack Russell Cakes. Mm -hmm. Pets have a tendency, they will act a little different when a little one's around. 
Mm-hmm. That's she for sure. She went through a little spell. She didn't really, hadn't really done it since. I had popped her butt. But, uh, a couple of times. But she would, um, she would pee on the floor. And she would pee on the floor. You know, it'd have to be like some kind of crazy, she's not feeling well or something crazy for her to like pee on the floor. But she would pee on the floor mainly around like where the baby was. Like the baby right now is in our room in the bassinet. And she would like pee outside the door or something like that. So, but it's just uh, they're getting used to it. They have to get used to everything too. Cause it's usually, oh my pet, my pet, hey doggy, boom boom boom, and now it's the baby, and the dog's gonna like, hey man, what about me? I'm chopped liver. Mm. You know, so yeah, this is a, it's a learning curve and getting used to things for your pets too. So if you have pets, um, just keep that in mind, especially like dogs. I have fish also; they don't care as long as you feed them. And I think now, um, Kix has gotten used to her. Yeah. I mean, t- actually, today makes it three weeks. The baby's three weeks old today. And so um, I think Cakes has now gotten used to the fact that, oh, things are changing around here. So I'm not the primary concern, I guess. So she's she's still our child, but she is the older sibling. That's right. So she you just... Those older siblings, Yeah, a little jealousy here and there. But I think she, for the most part, not going to say she's over it completely, but I think she's getting through it okay. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I'm rocking because I'm kind of rocking a baby. I don't think I got some kind of issue. I do, but I'm not. I mean, he does. I he do, has a but. few issues, actually. That's not an issue now. I'm just rocking. <laughs> but thank you for making that clear for us. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's going to be it. Is. Our first family photo. I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to end this right where it's at. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> and if you like this video please do not forget to like below by hitting that thumbs up for me that really does help my channel um, also please do not forget to subscribe to the channel while you are here mm-hmm. and hit that bell notification next to the subscribe button so that way you guys are notified anytime that I post a new video and also here's something if you guys want to see more videos of the family uh, more videos with Farrah and myself uh, doing sort of like this chat head style um, type of video. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know. And uh, just any suggestions are, are helpful. I would love to read you guys' comments. So please do not forget to leave something uh, thought provoking below for us. And I encourage you guys to come back because I'm going to be uploading quite a bit of content. So, uh, again, thank you so much for, uh, for watching. Thank you guys for your time. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.